Hello everyone. Welcome to the module on the renal system. In this module, we will talk about the renal cystic disorders. Okay. This is more of an informative session than an explanatory session. So the different kind of renal cystic disorders are the first one is autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Okay. Now what happens in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease? There are multiple cysts form in the cortex and the medulla. Okay. It is clearly visible in this image. You can look at these cysts. So this is present throughout the cortex and the medulla and causes enlarged kidneys. Okay. And it occurs both in both the kidneys. Hence it is a bilateral enlarged kidneys. Now what it does is these cysts destroy the parenchyma of the kidney. Hence, it ultimately destroys the parenchyma of the kidney. Now, what is the presentation of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease? It is presented with flank pain, hematuria, that is the blood or the RBC casts in the urine, hypertension, which is a very important aspect, and urinary infection. Is it clear? So, it is presented with flank pain, hematuria, hypertension, and urinary infection. 50% of the individuals, please remember this term 50%, progress to renal failure. Okay. Now, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease is due to mutation in PKD1 gene or PKD2 gene. Okay. So, if there is a mutation in the PKD1 or PKD2 gene, it will lead to autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. 85% of cases is due to PKD1 gene, whereas the remaining 15% is due to PKD2 gene. Now, the PKD1 gene is present on chromosome number 16, whereas PKD2 gene is present on chromosome number 4. Is it clear? So, it is the presence of cysts in the cortex and the medulla, bilateral enlarged kidney due to destruction of the renal parenchyma, Presented by flank pain, hematuria, hypertension and urinary infection and 50% of the individual leads to progressive renal failure. Now, what are the complications of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease? The complications include chronic kidney disease and hypertension, which leads to progressive renal failure. Now, this hypertension is caused majorly due to increase in the renin production. Hence, in the serum analysis, we get increased renin in the plasma. Is it clear? It is associated with berry aneurysms, mitral valve prolapse and benign hepatic cysts. Now, there, this is due to subarachnoid hemorrhage. Mitral valve prolapse is a heart disorder which is related to autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease and there's also presence of benign hepatic cysts. There's also diverticulosis. Okay. Now let me just focus on berry aneurysm. This is dilatation of the vessels in the brain. This is the major cause of death. Okay. So if there is a case of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, the major cause of death is due to berry aneurysm. Now, if the hypertension or the proteinuria is developed due to increase in the renin production, it can be treated by inhibition of angiotensin 2, that is by ACE inhibitors or ARBs. That means angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. Hence, the production of angiotensin decreases. Is it clear? Now, let us move to the recessive form. Okay, the autosomal recessive form is seen as cystic dilatation of collecting tubules. It is seen as cystic dilatation of the collecting tubules. Is it clear? Now, this is present in infancy, whereas autosomal dominant is present in early adolescence. Okay. Autosomal recessive is, is often presented in the 
infancy and is associated with congenital hepatic fibrosis. Okay, so recessive form is present with infancy and shows hepatic fibrosis. The significant oliguric renal failure in utero, that means if there is a renal failure in the uterus, it can lead to potter sequence. Now, if there is a urine, uh, if there is a renal failure, it will lead to oliguria. That means less production of the urine. Hence, eventually less production of the amniotic fluid, which will lead to potter sequence. I hope I'm clear. Now, the concerns beyond the neonatal period includes systemic hypertension. Now, after the neonatal period, that is during the infancy, the major concern is systemic hypertension progressive renal failure and portal hypertension. Due to hepatic fibrosis, there is portal hypertension and increase in the renin level leads to systemic hypertension. Is it clear? The portal hypertension is from the congenital hepatic fibrosis. Now let us talk about the autosomal dominant tubular interstitial kidney disease. This is also called as the medullary cystic disease. Okay, it causes tubulo interstitial fibrosis. Okay, hence it is tubulo interstitial kidney disease. It is also genetically transmitted, that is, heredity, and it may result to progressive renal insufficiency. So, what happens is there is a tubulo interstitial fibrosis, that means the tubulo interstitium of the nephron converts into fibrosis. Now, due to fibrosis, there is decrease in the reabsorption. Okay. Now, decrease in the reabsorption leads to inability of the nephron to concentrate urine. Is it clear? Hence, the nephron is unable to concentrate urine. Now, the medullary cysts are usually not visualized. Why? Because these make the kidney very small okay smaller kidneys are present on ultrasound and it has a very poor prognosis this is really very important and highly tested that it is very low prognostic okay it is basically the fibrosis of tubulo interstitium leading to progressive renal failure and inability of the nephron to concentrate urine it has very low prognosis and is a small kidney present on ultrasound. Is it clear? Now let us just talk about simple and complex renal cysts. Now simple renal cysts are filled with ultrafiltrate. Okay, and hence it is anechoic on ultrasound. This is very important. If there is a presence of cyst which is anechoic on ultrasound, it signifies simple cyst. Anechoic means it absorbs the sound. Okay, now it is a very common cyst present and it is usually asymptomatic and hence it is found incidentally on the ultrasound. But the complex cyst including are septated, enhanced or have solid components on imaging. That means these are high risk cysts and can lead to renal cell carcinoma. Due to septation and presence of solid components on imaging, it requires follow-ups or removal. If it is not removed, it can lead to renal cell carcinoma. So simple cysts are having ultrafiltrate, which is anechoic. It is usually asymptomatic, whereas complex cysts are septated and have solid components on imaging. And hence, it can lead to renal cell carcinoma. This is all about the system. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button and do subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comment section below which topics do you want me to explain. Thank you.